Good morning. It's great to see everybody this morning. If you'll stand with me and turn in your hymn books to hymn 426 as we sing together. Are you excited to be here today? Say amen. amen. Are you ready to worship? Say amen. amen. All right, let's get these announcements out of the way, and that's what we're going to do. Glad to see Keith back with us today and leading our song service. So we're always blessed to have Steve, uh, Keith back here with us today. Okay, if you have a bulletin, please get one. If you don't have one, we've got some men back there that will hand you one. If you'll raise your hand, we'd be glad to give you a bulletin. First of all, we'd like to recognize our visitors. If you are a visitor at New Hope Baptist Church, we're you're we're pleased that you're here and you're a special guest and we have this little perforated tab on the side of the book please fill that out and give us some information about your visit and uh, we'd love to have that so we can uh, 
check back up on these and then uh, maybe make a call on some of you if you'd like that. A lot of information on here. So please help us with this. This is very important that you do this. Uh, we, don't forget our Wednesday night services. We've got that going on. We have programs for our kids on Wednesday night. It's really, God's really blessing in that. So remember that. So bring your children to that, fifth grade on up. And then uh, on the upcoming events, if you'll notice there, uh, this afternoon we've got the nominated kid committee meeting. Now, there's two or three others here. Get your bulletin, and if you're on one of these committees, this is important that you uh, be here and, and say, if you're serving on one of these, please participate in these meetings, so they're very important. So uh, uh, if you have any children that are in uh, uh, Children's Church, Gail and Joan are back there. If you'd like, if you, any of the children want to go on back there, the, the teachers are already back there, so you'd be free to go on back there this morning for the Children's Church. This morning we have 35 on the bus, praise the Lord. That, Gary says, another record. We had a record last week. We've got a record this week. Gary said, let's pray for another record next week. But, but the heat and everything's not bothering them. They're right out there getting on them for the work of the Lord. And you can see the Lord is blessing in our bus ministry, and we're so glad to have these children here and this ministry. It's a very important ministry of our church, and the church supports it, and we always pray for Gary and that work there that they do. Yes, sir. Go right ahead. Stand up, brother. Amen. to work in the bus ministry see Gary and he's got uh, plenty of available spaces for your work and and if you do anything in that ministry whatever you do I'm sure you're going to be blessed you'll be blessed beyond what you can't expect but I'll tell you right now God is blessing in that ministry we're seeing children saved we're seeing families saved off of the bus ministry and praise the Lord and that's what it's all about is going out there and and uh, reaching these kids for the Lord and then bring them in here and disciple them and teach them and train them and nurture and administration of the Lord so if you'd like to have any part of that, it's, uh, if you can serve a biscuit, Gary would love to have you do that. To sign up, see Gary, and uh, uh, you'll be blessed by doing that, and God, you'll be rewarded. Uh, Mary Howard has asked me to, is Mary here? Okay, Mary's not here, but anyway, in your bulletin, Second Harvest uh, Food Pantry, they're in desperate need for these items. So get you a bulletin and read those, and just some different things there that you can bring to help these uh, children. Uh, She's got some uh, boxes sitting right over here. If you'd like to bring that stuff in and put it underneath this table. And please, let's participate in that now. And let's, let's help Mary out with this and help Second Harvest mostly with this, uh, this endeavor here to uh, help with this situation with Second Harvest. Uh, next Sunday, we're going to have a special guest here singing. Her name is Abby Pas Pascovain. I can't say that word. Get you a bulletin. and you figure it out. But I will tell you this. If you miss next Sunday morning, and not hear this girl sing, you're going to miss a blessing. Because this girl can sing. She's from, I think she's from Ohio, and she can, she can sing, and it's all singing as unto the Lord. You will truly be blessed, blessed next Sunday if you'll be here for that service. Okay, let's watch. Stand with me again and turn in your hymn books to hymn 407 as we sing.
fire would come at this time.
Christy, would you and your mama come up here and sing us a song? Uh, I would be blessed by having you today. Whatever you need this morning, you can find it in Jesus. What a great song. Beautifully sung, always. And so are here, Miss Bill. We're, we're glad they came this morning. If you will, turn them in your Bibles to 2 Kings. Chapter 7. We have been concentrating on the life of Elisha in the weeks past. We watched Naaman get up out of the water seven times and be restored. Gehazi turned from his master and became greedy and coveted. Even a young seminary student 
dropped an axe head down in the water because it was borrowed. The man of God threw a stick in and it swam. The Lord is still blessing Israel, though it has split into divisions. Judah and Israel are fighting. Samaria, the capital, Jerusalem, the capital, have been overtaken by Ben Dadadad. And the king of Syria has come against Samaria. And they are in the middle of the greatest famine of all the time. It has become so bad that they have begun to eat all of the livestock, horses, Donkey heads. Dove dove. You got down to the very worst part in chapter 6 where two women decided they would boil their children and eat them. So the first woman did that and on the next day the second woman said, I can't do that. So the lady came distraught before the king and the king was angered. He was so distraught that he tore his clothes and rent them. And then he became angry at the man of God. And he said, I have Elisha's head. There's no way this is going to happen. If he was to walk in here right now, and about that time, Elisha, Elisha just come walking in. Without fear or favor of man, he stood before the king. And he made... A proclamation. Would you stand with me as we declare this proclamation found in 2 Kings chapter 7? Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then a Lord of whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, Elisha said, Behold, thou shalt sit with thine eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. Father in heaven, Lord, it's my faith. We are so blessed this morning to hear the precious songs of Zion for the dedication of Key. For the way that you have blessed him, Lord, and his group, and how he serves his church. We're so grateful. For the steadfastness of God. For our choir, Lord, that still gets up and sings those no songs. Lord, I'm so glad, Father, that we can depend upon You. I'm glad there is a wall of prayer that I can come to. I'm glad, Lord, that I can seek You for every need, every desire, every burden, every heartache, and I can call up You and give thankfulness for the joy that You've given me. I pray, O oh Lord, now for this hour, for every individual that's here. Lord, somewhere in this message, there is a text, a word from God that can be used to every individual if we'll have ears to hear. Lord, I pray that You be glorified. Let Your servant, I pray, hide behind the cross and seek Your will to be accomplished. Oh Lord, thank You, Father, for the stirring of the Holy Spirit through our bus ministry for the 35 that's coming today. Oh Lord, I pray if there's a boy, girl, man, or woman here that's never been saved by grace, May they be able to know You. May they trust You. As two already this week have come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and accepted You as their Savior, Lord, let them know there's still room. There's still room. For it is in the name of Jesus we pray these favors. Amen. I've given you the opening 
of this chapter. You sort of see where they are. It's an awful situation. Have you ever been in an awful situation? Listen, can you just imagine how bad it was that a woman could take her child and say to another woman, we will boil and eat my child today and then have yours tomorrow. Oh, it was, a, it was a deadly situation. It was a terrible place to be in. And listen, they were inside the city. They were part of God's kingdom. And they were in an awful position. I want to share with you a message this morning. From the outermost to the uttermost. Well, when God gave me that thought, Bobby, I just thought, isn't that where all of us have been? From the outermost to the uttermost. There was just as story changes. And from outside the gate, we see four men. The Bible said who are full of leprosy. There are four lepers and they make a statement. It's probably one of the most uh, 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 thoughtful statements and all provoking statements in all the Bible. He said, shall we sit here and die? They were outside of the gate. They knew that, that the king was on the inside of the gate. And they thought to themselves, why do we want to go in there? Because they're dying too. And when I thought about that, I thought, how much worse is it to be to have physical leprosy on the outside or to have spiritual leprosy on the inside? Because you see, those inside the gates, those inside the city, those that were protected by the walls, they were dying. They were killing each other. They had no hope for the future. They could not see beyond the death in which they were in. But praise be unto God, the man of God walked by one day and he began to talk to the king who hated his guts. Man, he went in, and I tell you, if you've never been there before, sometimes you can go up and knock on a door. And you know what they'll say? Well, I've been around you Baptist preachers. I've heard that statement before. And I said, you ain't never been around me. Amen? I want you to know something. I don't care what label you want to put on me. I know that it's all saved by the grace of God. I still hear from heaven every now and then. I listen every now and then. The Holy Spirit comes in and begins to tickle my soul and speak to my heart and lay me in a place to where all I want to do is pray until heaven opens up and glory comes down. And listen, that old captain said to him, he said, what is your God going to do? He said he's he going to open up heaven and, and let, uh, let it come down. Maybe like, you know, Moses did. And I can just hear Elias just say, well, he did it once. Amen. <laughs> if he can do it once, he can do it again. Uh, but we see now that the four men on the outside said, why do we go in there? Because we're starved to death in there. We're starving here. So let's become, uh, let's just go to Assyria. Uh, and then may, if they don't kill us right off the bat, They'll just make us prisoners, and at least we'll get a prisoner's ration of food. They thought about where they were. When's the last time that we thought about where we are? Where are you? And you look up to heaven and you see the God that sits upon the throne of heaven. And He looks down and He sees you. And you know who you are and you know who He is. Where are you in conjunction with the King in heaven? Think about it for just a minute. Are you sitting here dying? Or are you going to run to the king that has the provisions of all times for you? Here's what they said. We'll just go in and if they make us prisoners, we'll be okay. So they headed up at the twilight early in the morning to get up. Man, I tell you what, they, they snuck out of, uh, of town and ran over to Syria when nobody else could see them. I want you to know when I was lost and in sin, I didn't want nobody else to see me when I ran to Jesus. You know why? Because I was ashamed of where I was. I was ashamed of the sin that I was living in. I was ashamed of the way that I had lived. I, and I was so ashamed. And I really I couldn't talk to nobody else about it because they couldn't understand it because they were in the same shape I was. And even those that wasn't, I thought, well, I, I, I still was so ashamed. Why would Jesus love me? They went in, 
But here's what happened. While they were headed that way early in the morning, the Syrians heard a noise. Man, it was a noise. I, I tell you what, listen, sometimes that's what needs to We need to get startled a little bit, you know what? We need to get shook up a little bit. We need to hear something. I will tell you when I well, listen, when I heard Jesus, the Holy Spirit speaking to me, it shook me up. It got me scared. It got me startled. I needed something. And then here's what happened. They got so afraid, they left they, they left so fast, they was taking off their clothes so they could run faster. So it says that those four men who were sitting on the outermost part of the city, they went to the outermost part of the camp. And when they got in there, you know what they found? They found food. They didn't find nobody. They didn't find no guard. They didn't find no king. Man, they sit down and said, let's eat. And they ate, and they ate, and they ate, and they ate. And when they got through eating and their belly was full, they looked over and there was a bunch of money. They said, well, there ain't nobody here, amen. <laughs> and so they filled up their uh, took garments and they took gold and they took silver. That was the enemy. Man alive. They said, what's happened here? And they took all this stuff. Man, and it said they went and hid it. I love this part of the story. The Bible says that one of them said to the other, we do not do so well here. We're in trouble. What we need to do is we need to go to the king and tell him what's happened, lest a worse thing comes upon him. Now, if you've read the book of 2 Kings, and I'm guessing here, I don't know, but can you imagine that maybe Gehazi, that servant that was Elisha's servant, the only servant of Elisha's that was ever called by name, Gehazi was probably one of those four lepers. He remembered what happened, the leprosy that came off of Naaman because he had taken his garments and that gold and hid it. And the man of God said, what are you doing, Gehazi? And Gehazi said, I do well, nothing's wrong. He said, did my spirit not go with you? Are you not my servant? Did the master not know what the servant does? And yet you have done this evil thing. And the leprosy that came off of Naaman went on to Gehazi. I believe Gehazi was one of those four lepers that sat outside the gate and said, we've messed up. And I'm not going to mess up again. So he goes to the porter of the city. The man standing at the gate. And he says, here's what we need to do. We need to show you what's happened. He began to show him. And so the porter went running to the king. And the king said, man, we're in trouble. Don't do this because they're just laying wait for us. They've left the city. When we go in, they will attack us. And the servant said, look, we're starving to death here. He said, if you don't care, let us take five horses. You know why I want to take five? Because they didn't eat the rest of them. All we got is five horses. So they made up two chariots, two horses in each chariot, and one man riding in the front. He said, let's go inspect this. Now y'all stay with me for a minute. When they got there, they found it just as the lepers had said. Look what we found. We found an empty place. So I went and grabbed some stuff and went back and said, King, man, this is awesome. You will believe what's happened. And the king said, tell the people. And he said, the people, man, they went out and they began to, on their way to the camp, they picked up garments. Because the Syrians had just run off and fled. You see, God had made the noise so they would leave. He still loves Samaria. He still loves Judah. He still loves Jerusalem. He still loves Israel. Even though they were fighting, He still loved them and provided for them. And then, He came back and told the king, and on the next day, the same hour in which the day the man of God had said it before, He said there was fine flour, measure of fine flour sold for a shekel. And two measures of barley sold for a second. So the king thought, well, I can still keep these people under control. 
I'm going to tell you right now, when God gets in the mix, me and you ain't going to stop it. Oh, Gamaliel said it well. Whenever he said this thing be of God, there ain't nothing you can do about it. But he said if it's of not, it'll fall by the wayside. I'm going to tell you right now that what you and I need to realize is that if we'll stay in, right in the center of God's will, the devil cannot stop us. He can talk about us. He can make us fear. He can make us die. But he can't stop the will of God when God's people puts their lives to the task. He can't stop it whenever people get up and say, yes, in the name of Jesus, even though I know the battle is going to come, even though the storm is going to come, I'm glad that Jesus is in the hinder part of the boat and He's just waiting for me to call His name. Thursday night in the middle of a storm, those that came and gathered on Thursday night began to pray. You don't know what happened. On Friday, a girl got saved. On Saturday, a girl got saved. I'm telling you that when it, it, you say, well, what was we praying for? I'm praying for God's will to be done. They still lost people to be saved. Amen. And God, seek you first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. I know that I came to you just a few weeks ago and started crying out 646. And that's the reason I've got this message right here to let you know uh, that I believe with all my heart that God has got His hands on His people to step forward and look forward and don't look back and to say, God, what do you have in store for us? Now I say, you say, well, what is that? Like? I'm going to tell you, I'm just like old Elisha. And Elisha just said, here's what's going to happen. He didn't know how it was going to happen. He just said, the Lord told him he'd been with Jesus. Amen. And God said, you just hold on. I'm going to show you a great thing. And I'm going to tell you, if we hold on and we'll go forward, God will show us a great thing. I know you get scared every now and then. You look around, you see them people, I don't who they are. I remember one time at another church, and I had a fella come up, and our church was growing much like this one. And he came up and he said, Preacher said he was a deacon. He said, Preacher, I don't know a lot of these people. And I said, well, Why don't you just go up and shake their hand and say, Hello, I'm so and so. How are you? Amen. I think that's the only way you'll find out who they are. Ask them. Amen. Somebody happy in the Lord say, Amen. amen. I don't know what the Lord has in store. Some of you say, we can't even get in the parking place. Amen. What do they do whenever you're a bunch of people ride together? What is it called? Car payments. <laughs> Thank you there, brother. I knew Jake would have the answer. He's the smartest man I know. Shows you how little I know. Carpooling. It might mean, you know... That you meet down at the restaurant somewhere and say, ride with me and I'll take you to church. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Preach it, Lord. I heard that girl. This morning I was coming in and I stopped down the wagon and the girl lives across the street. I said, how you doing? She said, I'm doing okay. She was telling me some personal things about her. And I said, I want to thank you for allowing me to park my car over there. She said, park as many as you want to over there. Amen. 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 So don't worry about parking. Don't be scared to go over there. Ain't nobody going to mess your car up. Amen. Just don't run into mine. <laughs> And then we come in pretty comfortable this morning. But there's coming a day it's not going to be so comfortable. Amen. When I mean that, listen. You might have to get a little closer than you have before. Just make sure you spray you right guard. Amen. I know I'm being funny, but I want you to know something. When you come into God's house, well, you know our focus ought to be? It ought to be on worshiping Amen. the Savior. Man, if I thought it was about how good I look before you, I'd quit a long time ago. Because all I'm here to do is show you Jesus. 
if you can see Jesus and you can bring somebody, remember what you remember what those four lepers did? They had to go tell somebody. When God did what they, He did for them, when they were sitting down there, they were looking at all the riches and blessings that God had given them, they said, we can't hide this. A girl that came in my office Friday, she couldn't hide it. She texted me back a little later and she said, I want to turn 30 on July the 15th. Can I get baptized on that day? Amen, amen, amen. If somebody else wants to be baptized, we're going to baptize on July the 15th. We'll baptize on July 22nd. We have to. We'll baptize on July 29th. We have to. Amen. We're here. And, and, and dear friends, you all have been so faithful to God's Word, faithful to telling others, faithful to lifting up His name above the heavens, faithful to going back where we don't see those that go back and take care of children's church. To God be the glory. Those that take care of the nursery. To God be the glory. I know there's labor involved that nobody knows about. I know that there's sometimes sacrifices that have to be made. But because you're making it, God is getting the glory for it. I know sometimes it gets pretty warm on that bus at 105 degrees. Amen. I was so amazed last week that it was as hot as it was and there was 31 kids on the bus. Had to feed them some cold drinks and some ice cream to keep them alive, but we did. But if it means getting boys and girls here to get them saved, that's what it's all about. And then I'm going to ask you, as I've said for six for six, come and get a song of invitation. There's another part of this story. The six for six is my heart has been, it's been going for a while, and, and I told you we was going to have envelopes, and we asked for them four weeks ago, and they told us they'd be here in three weeks, and to my knowledge, they ain't got here yet. But devil, you ain't going to get the glory. Somebody say amen. Our, our preparation is now. What are you going to do with what God's given you? You're going to share it with the world, tell Jesus to everybody. We have somewhere around $75,000 in the building fund. That ain't much. You know it ain't. My heart is that in six months, we'll get above six digits. That's just $25,000. I don't think we're going to stop there. I think we're going to raise $50,000 by December. And you know what it takes? It just takes me and you working together. I'm not expecting one person to write a $50,000 check. Won't make me mad if they do. Amen. Because we'll just keep going forward because once you get to six digits, we're going to work on another six digits. This is about the work of God. We've already got a lined up in September, a big yard sale. In October, we've already got lined up a, a carnival, I suppose, as, as Sister Tammy wants to lead in the festival. And it's all for the glory of God. And when you see the envelopes that we're going to give you next week or the next week, whenever they get here, let not your heart be troubled. They'll get here. If I have to drive dinner and get them myself, we'll get them. It says these words, building for the glory of God and not for man. And then right below that, you find a verse down in the It says, those things that are impossible with me, they are possible with God. So will you be praying? Will you be saying, what can I do? Would you just look and say, just imagine if 10 families said in the next six months we want to give $5,000. Or if 20 families said in the next six months we're going to give $2,500. This will not be the only opportunity down through time that we're going to have to give because it all goes to God. And I'm going to tell you right now, I found out a long time ago you can't outgive Him. Amen. If you think so, try. Amen. I dare you. You'll come back rejoicing and going, why didn't I do this? Amen. It's our stewardship to God. I'm not a big money preacher. Some of you might think so, but I'm not. Matter of fact, I, 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 I don't even like, I think, oh God, I, I, don't, I don't want folks to think about what I'm doing. But I want you to know what I'm doing is not about me, it's about Jesus. Amen. And the excitement that I've heard 
<laughs> this ain't just, this ain't, it is my vision, but it's not just my vision. You all have expressed your interest. You all have shown your desire. You all, God, God is using you too. So I ask you to be prayerful. Prayerful in the days to come how you can give back to God and honor His name so that our building fund will grow. And you say, well, when are we building? Where are we going? What are we going to do? I have no idea. I'm just going to be honest with you. But I'll tell you this right now. God does. And I'm trusting Him by faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I'm going to tell you, God has a plan for us and I'm just going to walk until the plan's fulfilled. Will you walk with me? In the final part of this verse, it says that man that got up and sneered, he jeered him, scolded him, scoffed at him. He said, what's your God going to do? Is he just going to open up windows of heaven and pour out flour on us? Is barley just going to come flying out of the sky? And he said these words. He said, you will see it, but you'll never get to eat of it. Will you stand in faith with me? Stand. And it says that the king took that man says, go down there and control the gate. Make the people walk. Don't let them get too excited about this miracle from heaven. Tell them they just got to sit there patiently, quietly, walk one by one. Let me tell you, when God gets on you, nobody's going to stop you. And it says that they trampled over him right in the middle of the gate, Brother Donnie. Walked on top of him and it killed him. And so the, full, the prophecy was fulfilled. You'll get to see of it, but you'll never eat it. Oh, it'd be easy to walk out of here and say, well, I ain't even got no plan. What's he think he's going to do? Don't he think we've tried this before? We've labored. I know you have. And I respect that labor. And I respect the work that's gone on in this body for you. But I'm going to tell you, if you'll stand with me, as I stand with God, and say, God, your will be accomplished. Jim Alil said it best. You won't stop it. I'm not getting run over trying to, but you won't stop it. New hope. God's got a plan for us. Would everyone bow your head just for a minute? I know this may seem like an unusual story because we're not in a dearth. We're not in a famine here. We're enjoying sitting up to the table and eating from God. But we know we need how, as, a, as they said, do we just want to sit here and die? Do we want to go forward? Is anybody here to say, Preacher, God spoke to my heart in such a way that I just want to get right in this movement and I want to walk forward for Him and I, I want to do everything I can. I, I want to see God. I, I want to just see what He has in store for us. Would you raise your hand? God bless you. You want to see what God has in store for us here? Raise your hand. Are you willing to be a part of it? Father in heaven, for every individual that's raised their hand, for those, Lord, that wanted to raise their hand, for those that said, yes, I'm here, and I want to do my part, God, I pray, Father, that you would help us, O oh Lord, to make a commitment, a vow unto you, that we're going to serve you, we're going to love you, we're going to reach out to the lost community, and we're going to bring them in, and then we're going to see what you're going to do for us. Oh, Lord, in the next six months, we'll have an opportunity just to see that envelope in front of us. It'll be a reminder, oh, Lord, what you'll do for us if we'll do our part. 
Help us, O Lord. I know, Father, our church has been good at tithing. God, I'm asking them, Father, to go above their tithe and to give of an offering. Lord, You are blessing our school. You are blessing our church. You are meeting our need. And, O Lamb of God, we come humble before You, praising Your name, asking You, Lord, to be glorified through this that others will see Jesus working. Lord, there might be somebody here, Father, that's they're at the outer most part of the church. They, matter of fact, they've come for a while, but they've never been saved. And You're calling them to salvation to the uttermost to come and fall on their face and say, I'm a sinner and I've never been saved and I want Jesus to come into my heart. Lord, there may be someone here that says, I've, I've been in this church for years, but I'm not active, I'm not working, I'm not serving like I ought to. Oh, Lord, I just want to come and submit myself to You and give You of myself that I can be a servant in this body. Lord, I pray You'd meet the need of every individual that needs to come under the sound of my voice right now that they'd be obedient in Jesus' name. Amen. Sing this song while it's singing. Would you let the Lord have His way in your life right now? so much for your faithfulness. Thank you for coming today. Uh, don't forget we have church tonight at 6 o'clock. I can invite you all to come back. I love what the Lord is doing here. And I pray that God, if He's not stirred your heart, that He'll stir your heart. Let you know that He loves you. I tell you, in spite of where we are, God loves us. Nothing can separate us from that love. And I'm glad that He continues to love us. 
you know what you need to be doing. You pray about it. You be faithful on it. Uh, and I, I'll tell you as your pastor, I'll not ask you to do anything. But I'm not willing to walk right straight down the middle with you and walk with you and do the best I can to help. So let's be thankful. Let's be faithful. I, I, I tell you, I'm not, I, I just wonder if I've set, if we've set our goal too low. I, that's how excited I am about it, Brother Robbie. I believe, and Robbie's making us a thermometer. And uh, I guess the only reason he hasn't got it made yet is because it keeps blowing up. It's so hot out there. Amen. So praise God. And we'll grab a thermometer and show us where we're going, how far we've come up, and, and, and build some excitement about what God's doing here. Make some money for the glory of God. It's all for Him. Anybody got anything to say? Yes, sister. Amen. Twenty second. We've been trying to get her here for four weeks. She'll be here the twenty second. Amen. I said it was going to be today, and I thought it was today until Friday, whenever Shane called me and said, "Are you ready for her the twenty second? And I said, "I'm ready for her now." And so she's coming the twenty second. Thank you so much, and we are glad that Gail's back. And, uh, it's always good to have Brother Pat. Good to have you here. Uh, and we're so honored you're here today, and, uh, and of course she's. Dear wife, God, and family, we love them. Uh, they're just family to us. We love them so much. We even like uh, Dale and Lynn. And uh, precious, precious people. And uh, so we're grateful, grateful to all that you've done. So good to have uh, Melody and Tony and your family. We love you. Appreciate you so much. And uh, Shannon Washington, thank you for being here today. We're honored. And we're going to ask him to be able to ask the Lord's blessings as we go on our way. Brother Shannon.